It has been called the worst tragedy in the history of Purdue University. Monday, February 24th, 1947. The night the Lambert Fieldhouse bleachers collapsed, killing three students and injuring 200 more. Senior William Waters from Tucker's Crossroads, Tennessee, was on the East bleachers, along with some 3,400 other fans that night. Just as the first half ended, and the Purdue and Wisconsin basketball teams headed to the locker rooms, the bleachers suddenly gave way, hurtling the fans violently to the floor of the field house. The 88-year-old Waters, now retired in Lebanon, Tennessee, recently recalled that night. In the spring, in the early spring of 1947, Purdue and Wisconsin was playing the last, last uh, basketball game of the season. You see, they were tied for the conference championship. And so from the engineering building, there were 13 of us that went across, uh, went, went across the campus and to, to, to see that game. We, we were up in the middle of the bleachers about halfway, about halfway up and uh, we were all sitting in a row, and those seats, etc. They had big, strong girders that supported the bleachers. And Purdue had played a masterful game. They were up more than maybe 24 points. It was more than 20. And so, as we, there were about about 8,000 of us there, and I guess 4,000 on these bleachers on this side. And as, we, and as they were going, leaving the floor uh, at the half, uh, everyone stood and applauded and yelled. And all of a sudden, the, the, the bleachers parted. And we were on the last row that sort of looked like went forward. And everybody sat down quickly and raised their feet to keep them from being caught under all of this. Well. The boy on the end was named Ray Seifert, was well of our group, and he was the only one hurt. He was caught by one of those girders and broke his leg, but he, he eventually came out all right. I'd been talking to a boy behind me, which I didn't know, and we were t talking about how wonderful the game was, and and after the after the bleachers got down and everything as as it hit. Everybody screamed, get off the girders, get off the blowers. And I think that the fact that we had many, many veterans, most of us that were there that had been or that were veterans of World War II, as we, as we cried out, we began to get off the boards and to pick people up that were hurt. And I picked up a girl who was, who was hung on a splinter of one of those big girders and her her calf looked like it was turned inside out. And as I picked her up, she said, get me, get somebody who's really hurt. And I said, I picked up that little girl and carried her on out of there. And I put her down where she could get, they could get her to put her in the ambulance. And, and that's the last I ever saw of her. This boy I was talking to, I saw his picture in the paper as one of the three that I thought that were killed. Uh, you always heard stories about others being killed, but I think they were rumors. I don't think it was true. I just don't. But if they were killed, I never knew it for sure. The accident claimed the lives of Roger R. Gelhausen, a 22-year-old Navy veteran majoring in physical education from Garrett, Indiana, and William J. Feldman, 20, an aeronautical engineering student from East Chicago, and a veteran of the Merchant Marines. A third student, Theodore E. Nordquist, 25, from Gary, Indiana, a senior in the School of Mechanical Engineering, died the following day.